Hello guys and welcome to the tutorial of uh, Node.js. We'll be uh, dealing with some parts of Node.js today. So in the earlier days what we did was we learned some basic concepts of uh, Solidity programming language in building the smart contract. So what were the smart contracts and why we, uh, did we use them is like uh, the basic part of uh, the blockchain technology. But while building an overall application or an end-to-end -end application, we need some scripting languages to in order to interact with our local servers or as well as our uh, web-based or cloud-based servers. So it is very important to know some scripting languages. So the one scripting language that uh, is of most importance today, not only for building blockchain applications, but also for building any kind of web applications today is Java uh, is Node JavaScript. So what is this Node JavaScript? And we'll try to understand the basic difference between a JavaScript and Node JavaScript uh, programming language. So, the first part is, what is this, uh, what is JavaScript basically to understand? So, JavaScript is nothing but, it is mainly used for building web applications as well as uh, responsive web pages. So, whenever you consider any web page that you have, if you get new, like, uh, uh, like plugins or pop-ins to your page, so it is all because of JavaScript. So, if you have a form, you will fill, you will fill everything in the form. If you want to submit the form, so all those data that is going to sit in the database, it can be through PHP and also you can do it via JavaScript. So, JavaScript is like the functional block of any web-based application, so which will make your pages more and more interactive as well as the functionality of the page will increase. So, JavaScript is mainly used for building web-based application and what is Node is nothing but Node is nothing but a JavaScript runtime. What is a JavaScript runtime is? It is an extension of JavaScript and it uses most of the syntax of JavaScript but there are some packages and extensions which are quite different from the conventional JavaScript and we'll try to understand what is the whole point of difference between your conventional JavaScript and Node JavaScript. So Yes, so we'll try to understand the first part. What is JavaScript engine? So every browser that you have will have a JavaScript engine. So most of the web pages that you write is using CSS, HTML or any other uh, like uh, front-end or back-end language uh, along with a scripting language like JavaScript. So these will run only in a browser. So whenever you open a browser and whenever you want to load a web page, if, uh, all the most important steps that are being done is done by the browser. So similarly, if you want to run some JavaScript code on your browser, that is if you want to run, uh, load a web page, the JavaScript part inside that is also loaded by the browser using a JavaScript engine. So JavaScript engine is like an compiler which is present inside the browser itself. So you have compilers which are there inside the browser which will help you run the JavaScript code. So those compilers are called as JavaScript engines. So what JavaScript uh, script engines do is they run the JavaScript code and they will fetch you the results. So what earlier uh, was happening is every time JavaScript was used only in web based applications so it could not be used anywhere. So that was the thing that earlier uh, the JavaScript implementations were. But the important thing to see here is we have JavaScript engines in each and every browser that we use. For example in Internet Explorer we have Chakra. In uh, Mozilla Firefox, we have Spider Monkey, and in Chrome, we have the most famous V8 engine. So, what is this V8 engine? Is it is a JavaScript engine that is used to run JavaScript code inside the browser. So, your browser is like a total compiler which can compile different front end and back end languages and also load them and display them to you. So, this is important to understand. So, one thing is, uh, you can see all the JavaScript implementations on your web browser itself and your web browser also has a console to like use JavaScript or the basics of JavaScript. Okay, just for your uh, reference, so what I did was I just opened my Google Chrome uh, browser and I opened my, that is my home page that was www.google.com. So if you just right click anywhere and click on inspect, so in this inspect, you can find the various HTML and uh, like the related JavaScript files. So this JavaScript files is all already loaded or it has a reference using this uh, like script SRC that is the source of the script that is the JavaScript files. So basically all the functionalities of the entire page is given through this JavaScript as well as your uh, front end languages as well as your designing tools like HTML and CSS. So if you come to the second part called console, so this console is an uh, like is like a JavaScript engine that is running inside your Chrome browser. So I can type in one of the comments. 
or one of the simple commands of javascript okay i can the first one is alert so you can type in anything alert uh, i am using the browser so yeah so alert i am using the browser so it it is popping up an alert so then there is a thing called as i'll create a variable named as x and i'll prompt enter a number okay so if i do this if i click on enter so it will open a prompt page where it can take in any data and it will display this data so this is the basic javascript engine that i was talking about so it is there in each and every browser and it is being used to develop a lot of web applications and give functionality to them so coming to the origin of node js what how was node uh, javascript built was node javascript was originally uh, built uh, by ryan dal so ryan dal was a person what he did was he did a beautiful thing that is he took he took in the code of the v8 engine of the chrome so v8 engine is the javascript engine of chrome to use it in a local environment he topped it off with the c++ framework so he wrote a c++ framework along with the v8 engine of the chrome so that would make javascript run in your systems as well so you can run the javascript uh, in your systems so that is how your node javascript was evolved so in simple terms it is nothing but a server side javascript what is this server side javascript is so in servers it is nothing but playing with the memory as well as your hard disk space and sending requests and receiving requests to remote computer so all this can be done only if you have some javascript that is running on your system so if it is just running in the browser you can do web application so this node javascript is helpful in running server based application so how will server based application help us building the blockchain network is since there is a decentralized system in each and every one's uh, like uh, like systems or there is a decentralized ledger maintained so updation of ledgers creating the ledgers everything is done using node javascript so it will play a huge role in like a uh, forming blockchain network so that is how javascript is gained uh, importance Mo one and most advantage is it is not only used in web applications it can be used for system level as well as server level implementation so important to understand that as well so then we come to the most important part of why javascript is very useful when compared to the other uh, like uh, server side frameworks uh, be it aspnet so why it is more helpful or why it is like used uh, at a more larger scale so first thing is javascript is uh, that is node js is asynchronous in nature while asp.net are all synchronous in nature what is this synchronous and asynchronous nature you need to understand so what we'll do is we'll understand it with the help of a simple example so that simple example is nothing but when, uh, the we'll consider the situation of a hotel where there is a kitchen and there are staff members of the hotel that is a server uh, of the hotel as well as customers so in case of a synchronous system or synchronous uh, like framework what happens is whenever a server comes to ask the customer what is like uh, the order that he wants to take the customer will tell his order and the server will go back to the kitchen and wait until the entire food is being prepared and after the food is being prepared he will get to that Uh, he will get that food and come back to the customer and deliver that food again he'll go to the next customer and then he'll again do the same process it is like a synchronous nature so it he cannot do independent applications at once so he needs to wait until the entire process of getting food and giving to the person uh, is finished so similarly we can consider staff as nothing but a thread okay so what is a thread you can ask me so thread is nothing but a small sequence of execution so it is like a bit by bit small parts of the uh, like the process or smart pa small parts of the os system code will be there so it is nothing but there is a thread so if the customer is a process what will happen is we can consider the customer as a process the staff as a thread and the kitchen as the processor what will happen is in case of an synchronous system the thread will come and fetch the process and it will take it to the processor so until it completes and it gives a result it won't go to the next customer or next process so similarly in synchronous systems until and unless each process is completely finished it doesn't go to the next process in case of asynchronous systems like a uh, node js what happens is the uh, the 
staff will come he'll take the order he'll go back to the kitchen and come to the second customer and also ask his order and go back to the kitchen so it is like multiple processes are being handled with the help of a single thread so single thread is nothing but a single small sequence of execution will go and handle all the processes that is similar to a situation where a single staff member handles multiple customers so it is analogous to the hotel customer and the kitchen relationship that is the process thread and processor in case of asynchronous he can do he can target and he can like uh, go to multiple customers at a time and get orders uh, like uh, simultaneously so it is not a single process that needs to be completed everything can be done separate separately it is not related but in case of synchronous it needs to be done one at a time so that is the problem with asp.net frameworks in if you are using them as server server side uh, like programming languages okay what i have done is i have come to the node js website this node js website will tell me what is the uh, how to download the node js so it in the website only it is clearly mentioned that node js is a javascript runtime built on chrome's v8 javascript engine so that is there so then uh, the security releases everything is there okay download for windows 64 bit recommended is 12.16.2 current is 14.0.0 so you can download the 12.16.2 it is recommended for uh, most of the users and it is like a stable version so you can click on this and download so after downloading it is very simple you can double click and install so that will work so after installation so it will uh, it will not load any application as such but it will install all the node requirements and you can uh, use it as it is so then you can also go to visual studio code so if you are if you are not familiar with using any kind of uh, i mean text editors you can use visual studio code you can download visual studio code as well so for windows you can download visual studio code even for others If you're using Mac OS or Linux based OS, you can download Visual Studio Code in that. Or if you're good with using other bro uh, other text editors like Vim or uh, Notepad plus plus Sublime Text, anything is fine, guys. It is just writing some simple commands and executing them. Even if you don't have any any text editors, also you can use Notepad. Also, that is the uh, that that is the level of uh, like uh, simplicity that I am trying to bring out here. So you can download Visual Studio Code as well. So uh that part also we can do it yes you can use this link and download the visual studio code and you can install it so this is one part that we'll be doing right now so i'll be using visual studio code as my basic uh, like the text editor for writing the vs code so otherwise you can use any other uh, like text editor no issues so the next thing that we'll be doing is uh I hope no, by now you have installed the Node JS as well as the Visual Studio Code. So what we'll do is we'll do we'll go to the next step. That is, we'll create a folder called as Node JS where we'll be implementing all the programs. So this is the folder called Node JS where I'll be implementing all the programs. So I can, can just open this folder and it is like an empty uh, empty folder. So what I'll do now is uh, first first thing is I can load my Visual Studio Code. so i can open this visual studio code so yes one second so i can open this visual studio code as soon as i open the visual studio code so it will ask me to open a folder so after you choosing this open folder option i can easily go to my desktop and open the node js empty folder is so i will select the folder so this is my okay after after selecting the folder it will open i mean it will show you that this is the parent folder node js so if you want to add any files you can add using this plus symbol so after doing that also one more thing you need to do so one more thing is you need to copy the location of that particular node js folder and try to open it in cmd okay so i'll teach you the steps just open cmd that is command prompt So after opening command prompt, what you need to do is you need to use cd for creating directory. So you need to use cd space the folder in which you have your Node JS. So you need to give the location of the folder. Mine is in desktop. Node JS is here. So I need to copy this entire location. So I need to copy this entire location. 
so whenever i am using this i need to copy my entire location so this is my location so i need to copy this because my folder is here i need to go inside that folder and try to compile the java the node js file so what i need to do is i need to open the folder that is the node js folder which i have created or any other folder which i have created copy the directory of that particular folder so that will be enough so then what you need to go uh, and do is cd space the directory you will go to the particular directories because we are writing javascript files in this directory because uh, in this folder so after writing this we need to execute the folder so that is how you need to do in javascript so you shouldn't close this minimize it and keep it somewhere that is minimize this so i'll tell you how to execute javascript file so minimize this and keep it so how do you start to add new files is simple so if you want to start and add new files you have this plus symbol here so you can use this plus symbol and you can name it as anything so i will name my first node.js application as app.js and i'll click in click on enter so here i have the javascript file that is created so where it is be being created it is created in your node.js folder so this is the first part on how to run your node.js or how to like use visual stored uh, visual studio code to open a javascript application and run a javascript code so coming on to this we'll try to execute our simple javascript code first so the first part uh, the first thing that will be executing is in case of conventional javascript it was used only for web based application so this uh, node.js what is the advantage is you can use it even for your uh, like os based applications as well as your server end based application so in conventional javascript there was a code called prompt or alert which would like be a print, print statement kind of thing but in case of node.js the print statement is given as console.log so console.log is nothing but the print statement where it will type or where it will write whatever you give it in the console so where is this console console is this cmd file so it will try to write everything to the con like cmd file so i will write hello students in my console.log so and this will end with a semicolon so this is the first statement that is the print statement so you don't need to import anything basic files will be loaded i'll tell you what to import and how to import and when to import but first we'll learn the basics so whenever you want to like print something so you'll use console.log and you will print that is the statements whatever uh, you want to print so you can print a variable you can print uh, any statement so how do you run this code is very important to understand so you need to uh, uh, press control s to save this file so if you don't save it and run it it will give you an error so how do you run this is pretty simple it is nothing but node app dot js so node is the keyword to run uh, that is to run a node js file since our file name is app dot js that is why we need to use app dot js as well the statement to write this i already told you node the file name dot js so node n o d e is the command in the command prompt you need to type in node command dot uh, like node app dot js is the file name if you type in it will try to print out our statement so this is the first statement that we wrote to print any data on to our console so this is important to understand so it is the basic syntax is uh, console dot log is the basic syntax so if you want to like uh, see how to like access the program it is nothing but node app dot js or node file dot js but the important thing is this app dot js must be there in this directory if it is not there in the directory or if it is in the home directory it will not run for example i will be in my desktop so if i type in node app dot js so most this these are all the uh, things that every beginner does so he'll be in some other folder so it will give you an error so very important to go into that particular folder and then execute it yes so we'll minimize this and we'll go back to our program so what we'll try to do is okay so what are all the different variables that you can use in javascript is easy to understand so you will initialize a variable using var so var is the keyword to initialize a variable so i can initialize x as a number 12 and 
I can initialize it as a floating point number y. So this I can do. I can initialize it as a string. So I can initialize it as a character. Then I can also initialize it as a boolean. Okay, so the one good advantage with uh, JavaScript is not JavaScript is C. Easy, th it is a very simple thing. You can use one variable to initialize. I mean, one keyword var to initialize any kind of variable. So unlike C or C plus plus, you need to use int. You need to use int. Then you need to use char. Then you use use float. So all those. uh keywords you used to initialize while initializing the variables but in case of javascript that you don't need you can directly use a keyword called as variable so you can easily use that variable keyword to initialize these variables so very easy to do it so to print them it is console dot log so i can print uh, any of these it is simple so print x and everything should end with a semicolon so that is important to understand so i can i'll print just try to print x y s and b so basic part i'm just printing out these things so i'll save this control s so again node app dot js so you can see in this result so you can see in this result So it is printing out well C and true, which is all the characters that I am printing out. So very easy to understand. So then, what we, there is an another function or inbuilt function which will try to print what type of data is it holding. So it is called as type of. so type of will tell me what kind of uh, data is it belonging to so that that is a important thing so you can save it again so it will tell tell us what data is it is our entire thing belonging to so if you can see here we can print out node app dot js so the first one is a number the second one is a string and the third one is a boolean so three things we are trying to print out that is the type of all these variables so very simple to understand any kind of variable that you want to print you can just use the keyword called as var to initialize a variable and then you can print out all the essential details that you want to print out so okay then i'll minimize this moving on okay moving on it is very simple if you have a uh, uh the statements conditional statements that if you want to use so how to use conditional statements is pretty simple to your c c++ or your java also so if i have age as 16 so i will initialize a variable with age 16 so if i want to use my if statement so what i'll do is i'll use if age is less than 18 so what i'll do is i'll use my console.log statement to print my your minor so how to use else statements you can use either else or or else or else what you can use is if you want to use else if statements you can use else if and again the condition so basic similar to any kind of uh, any kind of programming language that you use so if else if age is greater than 21 so you can uh, write another console dot log so this is how you uh, implement a basic if else if statement in case of a uh, in case of node js so i don't use else if statement i'll just use if age is less than 8, 18 i'll print it as minor so this is one part so i can save this and i can run here so it is printing out you are a minor so that is telling me that it has worked successfully so this is how you use 
if statements i am not concentrating more on all this because these are all the basic syntax you need to know while you are uh, using any kind of programming language so this is one part so then we will move on to the next part that is uh, functions so what are all functions and how to use functions in case of uh, the node js so to use functions in case of node js it is similar to your solidity how you a write a function is nothing but using a keyword called function and you can type in the name of the function called go so within this uh function what i'll do is i will just put a console dot log statement that is like a print statement so i'll just print hello here so this is the basic part how i can use a function here so i'll save it here so if i want to run node app dot js so one it thing is guys in case of solidity you had a separate part where you need to click a button to initialize the functions but in this case of node js so nothing is being displayed here so even i use node app dot js nothing is being display displayed here so what is the reason is you are not calling the function at all so if you want to do anything with functions you need to call the functions to make the functions effectively run in case of any programming language there how you how would you call is you, you would click a button here you need to manually call the function by giving the name of the function followed by the open and close braces so now if you try to run the function so i need to save this first so after that if i need to run the function so it is giving me hello so important thing is you need to call the function here so that is how it works so you can also give parameters to the function like you can give parameters like name and age okay so then you can use console dot log name and console dot log age so note one thing here console dot log and you need to use age okay so one thing you could have all observed here i have not named it as variable here because it will explicitly take it as a variable whenever you don't mention it you don't if you don't mention it it will take it as a variable so it is taking it as any i mean uh, any data type of variable so now what i need to do is i can use it as name harry potter and age i can give it as 30 so important thing is without even like a uh, telling what is the thing that it takes as an input parameter you can use it so you can save the file here and you can run the code again it is giving me harry potter that is age is 30 so that is how you can use a function inside node js so using function inside node js as well as uh giving parameters you don't need to name the variables as well so that will work fine even without uh naming those variables as well so moving on okay so moving on we'll go to the next part that is list or what we call it as a javascript array so how do you initialize javascript array is nothing but i will name it as my list is nothing but a variable so i don't name it as any kind of variable so i'm not using the var keyword so i will just type in any kind of data that i want to store here so it is stored so if i want to print that my list i can use console dot log my list so if i want to save it so this is nothing but a list so you need to use this square brackets to open and close this my list so i will tell you the properties of my list so if you try to print that my list so it is printing out all the variables inside my my list so it is console dot log is printing so if i want to check out what is the kind of data that it is storing so type of i will use of my list so then you can save it then you can try to run the code again so it is nothing but an object so what is this object is pretty easy to understand so object can store uh, what this is actually we call it as a javascript array so it is also termed as object in terms of javascript programming language what is the beauty of this uh, list or javascript array is it can store different kinds of data for example i can store a number i can store a boolean i can store a string so any kind of different types of data i can store it within a single variable called as 
or javascript array so this javascript array can be named as anything any name that you want so this will store our all kind of data so even if you want to store booleans any kind of data that you want to store mixture of all different kinds of data that can be stored inside a javascript array so the type of that is again an object so if you want to print out elements it is just console.log printing those elements onto the console you can save it and you can run here so it is printing out all my data that is one true string and false so the beauty of javascript arrays in case of conventional arrays like your c c++ what happens is you have only the conventional data that is one kind of similar data that is stored in consecutive memory locations but in this case you can store any kind of data together in the form of a single uh, like variable name using that variable name you can store multiple kinds of different data so that is how it is different from a conventional string that is used in case of a uh, uh like uh, c or c++ where you have used uh, just one single kind of data stored in multiple memory locations so this is how a uh, javascript array or you can call it as a list as well so what we'll do is we'll try to move on next so we'll just move on to the way for loops work in case of uh, in case of a uh, ja not js so how do for loops work is okay i will name i will have a list of a particular kind of fruits that i have so orange papaya and apple are different fruits that i have so i will initialize it in a javascript array so then i will use my for loop so how do i use for loop in case of sim exactly similar in case of how you use it in uh, in case of your c c++ or java so you will use for that is the initialization variable then comes the condition so i is less than list dot length so this is the inbuilt function list dot length which will fetches the length of the total list so then i will use the iterative argument that is i plus plus so similar how you use in c or c plus plus that is the variable then the then you have that is your uh, condition then you have your iteration so you can just uh, open the braces then if you want to try to print a control okay console dot log so how do you access the individual elements you must give it the index so index 0 will just print my first one so i will use i which is an iterating variable which will try to print out my zeroth first and second element so all these things can be printed out using the for loop that is how exactly similar in ca uh, the case of your uh, c or c plus c or c plus plus programming language that you use so if i use uh, node app dot js it is printing out my three fruits that is orange papaya and apple so that is how you implement a simple for loop in case of in case of uh, node js so similarly even while loop works so i won't be dealing with while loop it has the same condition so if you can enter the condition here where i is uh, less than str dot length and similarly you can add an iterating variable and you can do the same thing i won't be going into while loop because you already know what a while loop is it is the same execution like how you do in c plus c or c plus plus programming language so next part is okay so that is with the basic syntax so next we'll be moving on to the important parts of javascript so what is this important part of javascript node js that we'll be using is uh we'll be using two javascript files and we'll be trying to link the functions or link the data between two javascript files so that is important so how do you do it with two javascript files and link with uh those files is uh, pretty important to understand because we'll be mostly using different javascript files we'll not be using single javascript files and writing everything we'll be using multiple javascript files and we'll be trying to uh like access the data as well as perform some operations so how to do it is pretty simple you can use the plus keyword so this plus uh, plus button you used to add a new javascript file so what i'll do is i'll use it as app2.js is the second javascript file that i will be using so here i have two javascript files one is app.js and app2.js i will type a program inside app Uh, app two dot js. So then I will type, and then I will call this in app dot js, and I'll try to execute the same thing. What I'll do now is I'll call a function 
called as log so that will take a variable called as message so what it will do is uh, it will print the message basically so it is printing out my message so if i do this and if i try to run it here it won't work because one thing you need to do is you need you need to export the particular thing so if you try to export it so you are mentioning what is being exported so if you can tell that this function is being exported then you can load it in another javascript file and do it so what i did was i just created a simple function called log which takes in an input parameter called message so then i am printing out that message so that is the basic part i did with this a uh, simple function so if i want to use this in other javascript file so how will you use it it is nothing but module module dot exports okay what i want to export now my log function so i can name it as log itself or any other name i can give it so what i am doing is i am ex module dot exports dot log is nothing but i am exporting this function called as log and to an object called as log so anywhere i can uh, any other program i want to load this it is nothing but i am exporting the module called as log function into a into an object called as log so you can use it as logger as well no issues so anything that you want you can use it so it is not a problem so i'll just use it as a uh, log here so then i will save this in the first javascript application file then this is the second javascript where i have exported this log function so if i want to use it in my first javascript application note that these two javascripts must be uh, in the same folder even if they are in different folders you can use the keyword called as require so you need to use the keyword called as require so what i'll do is require is the keyword so require so then i will use this keyword called as require then i'll open and close the braces here one second guys some uh, some problems okay to use this require what is the simple thing is it it doesn't add anywhere so you need to store it in a variable either you can use variable here so variable Uh, i can use it as log is equal to require okay require what is the important thing that i need to use is i need to tell which javascript application it is coming from so this is app2 so you can either use dot js that is the endpoint that is the extension of the uh, extension of the javascript file or else if you don't use it it will take it as the conventional thing that is it will take it as a javascript file because you can require only javascripts from uh, the other uh, like uh, other javascript files so after using that is constant uh, or a variable first we'll use a variable then i'll tell you why not to use a variable so if i use a variable here require or uh, the application to where i am taking in the data so this variable will have my function so what i will do is i need to use that variable to call this log function so here in app2 i have named this as log so i need to call this log function so log dot log i will use so then i will type in a message so i am giving it a, an input parameter called message so this should print the message for me so guys understand the basic thing what we are trying to do in this app2.js that is the adjacent uh, application.js file i have created a function that takes in a log uh, that is named as log it will take in a message so what this is doing is i am uh, it is taking in a message and printing out the message whatever we give so i want to export this and i want to use it in some other javascript file so i am using mo module.exports.log so this log is telling me that this is the function that i am using okay so then i am naming this function or the object of this entire exported thing as log so if i want to use it in my other application what i will do is i am using the require function so this require function is loading all the loading all the things that was imported uh, exported here so what i exported is the log function here so i am loading this as nothing but the variable log so this is storing the function that is variable that is the log function it is storing so then if i want to call this particular function that is there in the next part i can use the function again dot log 
so this will try to print out the message for me so if i were try to run these two things so here it needs to print out the message for me so yes it is printing out the message for me so now if you are getting confused here okay guys so if you are if you got confused it is uh, it is pretty simple to understand so let us go into our original function so a lot of logs are there you might get confused so here is a function called as log which will take in message and return me a uh, it will print out the whatever message that i enter here so module dot exports dot log so this can be any variable which you want what i will tell is i will name it as exported okay export function so this will be named as export function so that is equated to this log what is this log it is nothing but the function so in order to use it in my other program i need to use export function i can't use this as my log so then i will save this so i will come to the next part that is app.js so here also i have used log i'll remove this i will use it as uh export okay i will use this as export so if i use this as export here so what this is doing is this variable export is exp is using that is requiring all the functions which have been imported using this uh, exp uh, export uh, to this variable called exp so if i want to run this particular uh, like function that is there here i need to use call this function called as export function so what i will use this i will use exp this is an object which is having the function named called as export function so if i want to run this i will save both these two so i will run this so it will print out the message whatever i will enter so a simple thing to understand this is the name of this is the name which you can give it to this is the user defined name which you can use it in the other javascript file to implement this is the actual function name and here what we are trying to do is we are using a variable here and we are trying to store the function in all the details of the function into this particular variable note this this is a very important concept that is there in node js which is not there in other uh, like ja other programming language in other programming language the maximum thing that you could do is you can take in a variable for example if a function is returning a variable you could store the return type of this variable but here this variable is only storing all the details of this function and this variable can call the function that is there in the other program and it can run it so this is the beauty of node js that is not there in case of any other particular programming language so why i told you not to use variable is so if i use the variable exp again and initialize it as 12 or 13 so the main problem is so the main problem is uh once i initialize it before uh, rather than this part so i'll just copy this so if i want to change all the data here so what is happening is i can it, it will fetch me an error so if i give it here before before i export something so if i initialize another variable unknowingly so it will fetch me an error so very important thing is not to use variables you can use a constant so that will have all the details of the particular function so you can import multiple things and you can call those multiple things for example i will have two functions here function log of uh number 1 and number 2 so if i have to no log of number 1 and number 2 so this will do is nothing what it will do is console of console log of num1 plus num2 it will uh, give me the sum of these two variables so this is the uh, i'll not name it as log i'll name it as add so if i want to use the same thing in in my other uh, like uh, javascript file i will rename it as add so this is my add function so i will rename it as add so this will not be log what it will be it will be okay this will be let it be add so this will be add function so not to confuse you so the name i have given it to the expo exported thing is called as add function so what i'll do here is i should type in add because it is a function here so i will save this in my second javascript file come back to my first javascript file so what i'll do is i'll use my another constant called as uh, a so that will store that will store the function details of it is already required 
okay so uh, no need to import it again what i can do is i can use exp dot add function so it is already being imported here so what i'll do is i'll give two variables so if i give the two variables it would should print the uh, addition of the two variables yes so it is 12 plus 2 it is printing 14 so that is how you can take in multiple functions or multiple data in particular of a particular function you can take this even for a data for example if you have a variable called as uh, str so i will have some data here so if i have this data here even i can use this as my okay i will use this as str1 and even i can take this variable and I can use it in some other function. So that is how you can use multiple things here. So you can use even the variables as well as functions and you can use it to require in the other packages. So require is the keyword to require the exported files from another JavaScript file. So then it will always be stored in case of uh, in it will always be stored in a constant. You can use a variable to store the function details as well. Whenever you use this, you can name that function name and you can try to execute all the functions. So very important thing to understand here is a constant or a variable can store all the details of the function and it can access the, it, it can, it, it will act like an object where it can access the functions of the other uh, like JavaScript files which you have required. So very important to understand here. So this is the uh, implementation that we did to require uh, a particular package from other part and then you can use it so okay that is one part uh, that we can uh, do it here so then what we'll try to do is uh, we'll move on to the next concept that is the concept of file system so what is the concept of file system and how to use it i'll tell you okay before moving into the file systems we'll try to understand what are all the things that are available in the node.js packages now what we'll try to do is we'll not go into the packages that is our own return packages like app2.js and loading in app.js and running it we'll see what are all the existing packages that is available so when you go to node.js.org so you have something called as docs so this documentation will tell us Okay, we can use this 12.16, that is the latest stable version. What are all the packages that is available here? So you have packages called as path, you have packages called as operating system, you have packages called as HTTP to call in servers, that is to create servers and to give HTTP requests. You have like DNS server based uh, uh, packages, then you have Zlib timers for uh, adding timers, then lot of packages are there. So we'll try to use some of the important packages in our whole program. So we'll try to run some important packages in our whole program and try to execute all these parts. Okay, so first one, what we'll try to do is we'll come back here. So what is the important thing that we'll try to do is we'll load a particular, uh, we need not need this app2.js, we'll just use one application that is app.js. So what we'll do is we'll try to add a library. So how I told how I uh, told you to add a particular uh, export a package from another JavaScript file. Similarly, you can load the libraries or the packages that are inbuilt. So I will, the package name is called path. I can use any, any like a uh, user given variable to initialize that. So important thing is you need to use a constant always to require any packages. So what will this constant do is it will act as an object where you can utilize the features of this imported library so this is the first step that is constant path is equal to required path so this path is nothing but a constant which is storing all the libraries and details which are there in this path library so this is an inbuilt library that comes with uh, uh, node.js so what we'll try to do is we'll create a variable called as path object is equal to what we'll do is we'll do path dot parse So this part.parse is an inbuilt function. So what this does is it will try to get the details of our file name. So file name is also an inbuilt variable. So if you want to get the details of all the file name, where is the particular, uh, 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 this application is present, this file name is storing all the details of this app.js, where this app.js is, how to use this app.js in your application. So how can you run each and everything in this app.js? So every, every detail is stored in this uh, the, the file name. So 
you can use this file name that is path.obj it is the path.parse so this is the library path it has an inbuilt function called as parse so this parse is nothing but it will fetch you details of the file name variable file name is an inbuilt uh, variable which stores the details of where this app.js is located so simple to understand we'll try to save this and we'll try to run this okay one second part dot Oh, variable part dot obj is equal to one second. Okay, simple mistake. Console dot log I didn't use. So console dot log is used. So now if I try to use this, yes. So now it is giving me an object which contains which is the root directory, which is the directory name, which is the base application, what is the extension, and what is the name of the application. So this the this file name will have all those things, but this parse. Function is storing all the important details like the root direct root folder directory uh, and the base. What is the base application name? What is the extension and what is the file name? So this is the function that is parsing into this file name uh, variable and it is trying to find out what is there in that variable. To understand the true nature of this uh, like this parse object, what we'll do is we'll remove this uh, for a second. We'll cut this for a second. So we'll just try to print out what is there in this file name directory. We are not using this part dot object. We are just trying to print out what is there in this file name variable that is inbuilt variable. So if I try to run this, so it is giving me the directory. This directory it is printing out. So this directory is telling me that my application is there in this underscore underscore file name that is an inbuilt uh, file name which has the directory of where my path is. But whenever I print this. path object so it is giving me an object which contains all the details of the directory and telling me what is the extension directory base root so that is the difference of this part dot part so this is one of the import, uh, important like uh, things that you will need to know whenever you are importing an inbuilt library and using in, uh, importing all those uh, functions so how will you know what functions are there you can go to this uh, node js documentation you can see what are all the what are all the important uh, functions that are there in this parse path library so path dot parse here see it takes in a string and returns an object so what is an object it contains a set of directories which have root directory base extension and name that is how we can use all the important things so i won't be using all this particular function just to show you particular library i use this Okay the next thing that we'll be doing is we'll be using an OS library so what is an OS library that is also an inbuilt library uh in the node js that is operating system which can show you all the free memory how much of memory is there how, uh, how much of uh, cpu space is there each and everything it will show you so this is an important thing conventional javascript could not move into your cpu and tell what uh, tell the status of your cpu but in case of your uh, node js it can work with your process that is the threads all the important part of your operating system so it can work with your operating system and it can take in all the essential data from it so it is similar so i am creating a constant called as os which is storing all the important functions so it is acting as an object which stores all the important functions that is there in this os library so these are all pre built library so you need not use this dot slash to tell which directory they are in so what is the function that i'll be using is pretty simple i will use two functions so i will store the total memory in a variable called total memory that is how much of memory is available in my operating system that is in my disks so total mem is my function so then i have variable free memory that will have os dot free mem as my function so this will give me what is the free memory and what is the total memory so in order to print them i'll use console dot log total mem memory is the variable so i need to use total memory then i will print in another line console dot log what is the free memory that is available so if i can save this so if i try to run this again so this is the total memory this is the like this is telling me this is my 
total memory that is available within the total memory this amount of free memory is available to me so this is taking taking in all the drives for example if i have c and s drive so it takes in all the drives that i have it will calculate the total memory in that how much of memory is free for me to use is it is telling me this is how your entire os um, library is working in case of your node js so simple thing so all the path and the operating system like libraries were not there in case of your conventional javascript your conventional javascript was mainly used for linking between the different uh, web applications loading some forms creating some check boxes so all those things were there but here the main usage is interacting with your operating systems working on the server and so all those parts are there so with this i think we come to the end of our first tutorial on Node.js. So in the next class, what we'll be doing is we'll be doing some more operations on Node.js on how to send HTTP requests and other event creator based simple things. So then on we'll be moving to Web3.js where we'll interact with the smart contract as well as a blockchain to get some data from the blockchain and to print it on our Node application. So that is what we'll be doing. So I hope you have understood the basic concepts of Node.js. So I will be posting most of the all the code. on to the whatsapp group you can see through the code and you can execute it uh, yourself so i thank you guys and i hope you had a wonderful session